Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Redden and today I'm attempting to make a working volcano cake. So here's what I'm thinking. Get a big syringe, take out the plunger bit of it and then pull off the rubber circle that's at the end. Then push that rubber circle back down into the syringe and put that in the middle of your cake and then add the volcano lava. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make that from yet. Maybe a ganache or a strawberry sauce. I'll figure that out later. Then I'm going to use an empty bottle and attach a tube from the lid of the bottle to the syringe and then put hot water and dry ice in the bottle and the theory is that the carbon dioxide released from the dry ice will fill the bottle, go along the tube and create pressure that will push the plunger up, forcing the lava up and out and over the sides of the cake. One problem that I can foresee with this plan is if it keeps pushing it up and up, this black disc is just going to pop out of the top and potentially hit someone in the face, which is not what you want at a birthday party. So to resolve that issue, I'm going to drill some holes all around here so that when the disc gets to the top, the gas can escape from the holes, which will give us some smoke and the disc won't fly out. Well, that's the theory. Let's make it and see if it works. I've bought a 200 milliliter syringe. The kids drank the soft drink for me, so I've got an empty bottle. There's a tube and my drill. Take the rubber bit off the plunger and push it back into the top of the syringe. Use a marker to draw lines just below the black disc and then push the plunger back down to the bottom of the syringe. Step one, done. Use a drill to make holes where you put the black marks. And next we'll need to figure out this bit. Obviously we can attach the tube to the tip of the needle, no problem, but the question is how are we gonna attach it to the lid of the bottle? So if we drill a hole through the lid and then move the drill around a bit to make the hole a bit bigger, hopefully our tube will fit through the hole, hopefully. Yes, it does. Very good. And now to make sure no gas escapes, I'm going to put the hot glue around the top because this gas is going to be under pressure and I don't want it escaping around the lid. Put that on the bottle and our contraption is ready and it's time to make the cake. For that, you'll need butter, sugar, salt, baking powder, vanilla, milk, oil, egg whites and flour. Tip your butter in with your flour and add the sugar in there as well as the rest of your dry ingredients so your salt and your baking powder. Mix those together and I'll put all of these recipe quantities on the howtocookthat.net website and there's a link to that below. Keep mixing that until it looks like wet sand like this. Put the oil, milk and vanilla into a bowl with your egg whites and whisk that together. Then pour about one third of that mixture into your flour mixture and mix it until you have a smooth paste and then add in the rest and you want to whisk that on high speed for about five minutes. Split most of your mixture between two cake tins, just leave a bit in your bowl and colour what is left in the bowl and then pour that on top and gently swirl it through. You don't need to mix it in because it's going to actually swirl while it's baking as well. Make another batch of cake mixture and bake half of it in a cake tin and the other half in a bowl for the top of our volcano. Now you've got your bottle attached, take the tube and thread it under and through the cake board and then we'll attach the syringe there. Now we don't want to make the hole in the top of the cake as wide as the top of the syringe is. We want to make it the size of the rest of the syringe. So get a cutter that's the right size. We'll build up our cake first and then we'll join the syringe on later. Put some buttercream on the board to stop your cake slipping and then add your first round cake with the centre cut out. Stack up the other layers all the way up to the top. Hold your tube and add your syringe down the centre. Now you may need to look from underneath the board to make sure they're lining up and it's securely attached to the tube. Now I'm concerned that the gas won't be able to escape from these holes so to combat that I'm going to poke a hole in the cake to make sure it has a clear path to get out. Then grab your knife and trim off some of the excess cake so you have a nice slope down from the top of the volcano. Add some buttercream to the bottom and use those offcuts that you've just made to build up around the bottom of the volcano. And you can also use the circles from the middle of the cake too so that nothing's wasted. 
completely cover the whole thing in a thin coat of buttercream, this is called the crumb coat, and then cut some slits at the front to encourage the lava to run that way. Whip up a batch of chocolate buttercream and spread it over the whole thing so it looks more like dirt and rock rather than a vanilla cake. As much as volcanoes are fascinating and lava is cool to watch when you're watching it on video, if you actually lived near one, they're actually quite devastating. I've been up Mount Mayon before and spoken to people who lived there and after previous volcanoes and the rebuilding and everything just been covered in metres and metres of ash and how devastating that was for them. So my thoughts and prayers are with those of you who are currently in evacuation centres waiting to see what that volcano is going to do. If that affects any of you, let us know in the comments. We'd love to be able to chat with you too. Roughen up the buttercream and add some extra around the edges as a barrier to stop the lava flowing off the board onto the counter. Now let's remake those holes for the gas to escape, just taking it down to where your drill holes were. Then take some cocoa powder on a dry paintbrush and just dab it onto the frosting to add some shading to different areas of the mountain. Place some biscuits into a food processor with some green food colouring. If you don't have a food processor, you could just put these into a plastic bag and crush them with a rolling pin and then mix in the green colouring. And then you just want to sprinkle some of that over your mountain. Now for the lava, I'm going to try caramel first because it can be quite thick and lava-like. Heat the sugar, glucose syrup, water and cream of tartar in a pan. And again, all the recipe details are on the website for you. Let that boil unstirred until when you drizzle a spoonful of it into cold water, it sets enough to hold its shape, but it's still a little bit flexible like this. Add the cream and heat that up again until when you put some in a cup, it's looking fairly thick. And then pour that into a heat proof bowl and add the colouring, stir that through, that's a nice bright lava looking colour, and then just leave that to cool. The other option I'm thinking of is using ganache for the lava. So for that, just take some melted white chocolate and add in your cream and stir it through and then color it. So we have ganache and caramel. I think the caramel looks more like lava, so I'm going to try that one first. Now I'm using a funnel to pour this in, but because it is so thick, it's going to take a while to drain in. It's a little bit slow, but I'll just wait. All right, now it's full, it's dry ice time. Screw the lid onto the bottle and let's hope it works. Here it comes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> the caramel was so thick, it's all just come out in one big cylinder. Oh dear. Take two. <laughs> Push the plunger back down and microwave the caramel so it's slightly warm and that makes it a little bit runnier and so we can refill the volcano and hopefully this time it works. Add more dry ice to the bottle and screw it on. Whoa, that was fast and it, that is nice though. It's nice and thick like lava. We're not getting the smoke though. I can add a few dry ice bits to the top for that. That does look pretty cool, but it's not quite what I had in mind. Let's have a look inside and see what's happening. You can see from this that the plunger has turned sideways halfway up, so we didn't get all the lava out, we just got some of it out. Take three, let's try with the ganache instead. The ganache is not as thick, it's a bit more slippery, so it might work better. Oh wow, that was unexpected. We got some lava and now it's bubbling up in the middle. I kind of like that, that's pretty cool. If we take this one out of the cake, you can see the plunger has also gone slightly sideways, which must have been allowing a small amount of the gas through. And that was giving us that bubbling up effect, which was pretty cool, I think it worked actually very well. If you don't want it to tip though, so that you get more lava coming out, you could try cutting the end off the hard plastic plunger and put it in backwards so that the black bits at the top and that's going to hold it straight. One thing I am curious about though is we don't seem to be getting any visible smoke. I'm going to try attaching the bottle with no lava. Hmm, we're just getting a lame amount of smoke. I can feel the gas is coming out of this tube but we can't see it. 
oh, of course, I should have thought this through before. The smoke you see from dry ice is not actually smoke at all. It's just fog. Really, the cold carbon dioxide gas cools the water vapour in the air just above it, causing it to condense into tiny droplets, and you see that as the fog. But by the time that fog runs along my tube, some of it's actually condensed into big water droplets and the rest is warmed up again, so we can't see any fog at all. We just get clear CO2 gas like what we breathe out. Okay, take four. I read somewhere that unset jelly, if you put that into the middle, it will bubble up like lava when you add dry ice to it. So let's test that theory, it sounds good. I've put unset jelly in the centre and sealed off the tube and now apparently we just add the dry ice to the top. The smoke up, I mean the fog, looks awesome now, as you'd expect, but I'm getting streams of unset jelly flowing down my cake. That is not good. Look at that, it's made a real mess, just a red puddle down the bottom. I'm gonna need to soak that up before it goes everywhere. It does seem though that it is starting to bubble a little bit, but not enough to overflow, and now it's just stopped. Let's look at the tube inside to see what was going on. That was a bit underwhelming. You can see here the jelly is just set, so it didn't bubble long enough for it to actually overflow. So you can try that one. I didn't love it. Take five, the traditional method of putting dry ice in the center and pouring on the hot water. This makes great smoke, or I should say fog, and the tube underneath is actually really useful for this because you can drain out the water so you can do it again. Because you can see quickly, the dry ice smoke or fog slows down as soon as that water cools down, unless you add more hot water. But you're not gonna be able to keep adding more hot water unless you can drain away the cold. So if you actually set it up the way we had it, that can actually work pretty well for you. Let me know which method you liked the best or if you've got another idea that you think might work. Not vinegar and bicarb though, because it has to be yummy. This is a cake, people. Personally, I'd like a combination of number two and five. If you could maybe use two tubes in the cake, make one overflow the caramel lava and the other one do the smoke, that would be pretty cool. Click here to subscribe to How To Cook That, here for more cakes and here for chocolate. Make it a great week by treating others how you'd like to be treated and I'll see you on Friday.